Well, to both our surprises, it looks like I'm here again. I did say I was going to stick around this time, but I guess time will tell. So let's get straight into this, shall we? So, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of community or retail pharmacy? It's okay, you can be honest. Is it a shop where chemists play around with chemicals all day and go on to make cool potions and creams? Is it a shop of, as they've been called, pretend doctors who didn't quite make the cut? Aren't they just shops that sell medicines? Whatever you're thinking, the reality is that pharmacy is very much misunderstood and the misconceptions are common. I remember sitting in university lectures that asked the same questions about pharmacy, which made me wonder to myself why I was getting a degree in a course where it started showing insecurities in its mid-term crisis. What it seems like is pharmacy in general and community pharmacy specifically spends quite a lot of time trying to explain and justify what it isn't rather than what it actually is. Now, I won't go into all the details of pharmacy's origins and how much it has changed over the years, partly because that's boring and partly because I don't know all the details myself. What is clear though is that it's been around a very long time in its very different forms at those different times. So, let's clear this up, shall we? With a Cambridge Dictionary definition. Pharmacy is <coughs> a shop or part of a shop in which medicines are prepared and sold. Okay, fair enough. I can see why you might have thought that then. Yes, pharmacies do prepare medicines. They also sell some medicines. And pharmacies and communities do tend to be shops. Yet they do much more than just sell and supply medicines. Community pharmacies come in various shapes and sizes, from smaller independently owned pharmacies to larger chains with their stores all around the country. It's quite likely there's a pharmacy near you. In England, for example, there are over 11,500 of them, from high streets to rural suburbs, from highly affluent to more deprived areas. As the name suggests, community pharmacies have historically sat in the centre of the local communities and play a key role in the health and well-being of the local population. Right, <clears throat> bear with me on this one. If we're trying to understand the NHS and its ever-changing structure, you've come to the wrong place. That is beyond the scope of this video and the scope of my mental capacity. So apologies for the oversimplification. My goal here is to set the scene rather than look at specifics. So how does community pharmacy link with the NHS? In short, community pharmacies are private businesses. They could, and some pharmacies do indeed, operate while waiting to get an NHS contract. Those pharmacies would be quite limited though in what they could do, as we'll go on in future videos to look at the different elements of what the NHS contract provides. Also, there are quite a few differences in some of the more specific contractual arrangements between community pharmacy contracts in England, Wales and Scotland. They're all regulated by the General Pharmaceutical Council, known as the GPHC. Northern Ireland has its own separate regulator, the Pharmaceutical Society of Northern Ireland, the PSNI. And being in business and being in healthcare, it's not so simple as to just have rules and regulations by one body. Medicines themselves are regulated by the Medicines Healthcare Regulatory Authority. Your contract gets monitored within the NHS, as well as an array of other bodies that may be watching over you and checking in, all part of the package of running a business, and particularly a healthcare business, in the UK. Also, to mix things up even more, within each country, services may be area-specific, dependent on where you're living. This is why there can be variation between the services on a pharmacy in one town compared to another, and even more so in one road compared to another. Okay, so it's almost no surprise then that community pharmacy can spend a while trying to explain itself. Because of all the regulations and changes that can be common in the sector, there's no simple answer of what it does. Because the health needs of the population changes, so too change some specifics about what pharmacies, or the pharmacies in that area, have to offer. If there is one picture though, 
that really sticks to mind. It's in March 2020 when the impact of coronavirus in the UK was really felt. When many businesses and healthcare practices had to operate behind closed doors, if not completely closed, community pharmacy never really could. More than ever, the discussions and value of the shops that sell medicines started to show. Because as the world as we knew it was changing forever, pharmacy was adapting while its doors were open to the public and trying to respond to each of its local population's needs. The reality is that just as society changes, the business landscape around it starts to change too. With the rise of internet shopping, and in England for example, online pharmacies being very much prevalent, there is a looming threat to your local high street pharmacy being unable to survive. What does your local pharmacy do for you that makes it so important for them to stick around? Sure, online can be more convenient, but other than the supply and sale of medicines, what is it that your local pharmacy can do for you? And this is what we will try to be looking at in the first series on this channel. As I said earlier, there may be big differences between the services provided by two pharmacies, even if they're on the same road. So to understand this better, we need to look at the services that pharmacies provide in more detail. So, in preparation of the next video, let's break it down. I'm going to say that pharmacies run four types of services overall. Pharmacies provide non-NHS services or private services where the funding doesn't come from the NHS. And then there are three categories of NHS services which we briefly mentioned earlier about the pharmacy contract. Our first look will be at these three types of services pharmacy offer as these arguably are at the heart of most community pharmacies. Category 1. Essential Services These are services that all pharmacies operating under an NHS contract must provide. So whichever pharmacy you go to, these are the services consistent among them all. The most common example of this is dispensing of medicines and appliances, where you can take your prescription to any pharmacy. Number 2. Advanced Services these are services that, provided they undergo the right accreditation, these are services that are accessible to any pharmacy to provide should they wish to. In other words, if a pharmacy wants to provide these advanced services, they can, but they don't have to. Number 3. Enhanced Services, also known as Locally Commissioned Services. These are services that are on offer to some pharmacies subject to the needs of the local population. In other words, if the funding's there and the local population needs it, some pharmacies will be able to offer this service. And I hope this provides, albeit an oversimplified one, an insight into how community pharmacies set out. Please note, as the pharmacy I runs in Cardiff, Wales, most of this channel will be looking at pharmacies and arrangements in Wales and England. So please do stick around as next week, we start to look at all these services in more detail. In the meantime, it would mean a lot if you could please like, share and subscribe. And hopefully, I'll see you next week.